Well, um, I already see hands going up, so um, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll ask uh, Peter and then, uh, then von der Leyen. I simply would like to underline in the strongest possible terms what uh, Dr. Schellenhuber has said at the end of his excellent talk. 200 million people have been killed in wars since countries and colonies began to be sorted out 200 years ago, 200 million people. And right now, we have the senseless slaughter of civilians going on by the hundreds of thousands in, in uh, Jordan, in uh, Syria, at Mosul, in Yemen. Nobody really knows the reasons more nuclear warheads were built during the Obama administration than dr under any earlier president in the United States. We now have 7,000 7, nuclear warheads in the U.S., 7,700 in Russia, many other countries with nuclear warheads. I can't really see any reason to suppose that there won't be further wars. And when we see things like Donald Trump when we see things like Brexit, when we see things about the insane hatred of Muslims and Jews that's growing up all too strongly in France, I think it should impel us all to take really serious steps to try to avoid these catastrophes, which otherwise are certain to happen. One of my friends likened the world to a, if you build a barn and put all kinds of TNT and, and fuses and things and matches in there, and then you added about 20 chimpanzees and came back six months later and it hadn't blown up, you could say, well, everything's going to be all right. With Russia and the U.S. and China all posing around one another with very dangerous governments in all of these countries, with everyone seeking to feed their greed by gathering more resources from the rest of the world, I think there's no hope for any of the good things that we want to pursue unless we get serious about this. I would hope that this academy, which played a very constructive role in the prevention of nuclear, uh, further nuclear escalation a number of decades ago, would be able to think seriously about what we might do or say about war at the present time, presumably jointly with the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. All of the things that we're pursuing are important, and the most serious changes that have occurred in the growth of our population from 1 million people 50 generations ago to 7.4 billion today are coming to a head now. There will never be as many opportunities for the preservation of biodiversity, or even as our chancellor has emphasized for the preservation of civilization, as we have right now in the year 2016. And I very, very much hope that we can take the spirit of what uh, Dr. Shellen Huber has just shared with us and try to do something effective about it. I hope our council will consider this matter very seriously and I for one would be glad to do anything that I could to strengthen this utterly important effort. Thank you. Uh, van der Leyen? Yeah, I, I grew up in a country that uh, pretty much destroyed a lot of the environment. And uh, I've seen at least uh, 20 agreements. In 90, I remember there was a big uh, meeting with all the nations. They put some goals to reach, they did not reach. And then they renegotiate. And uh, you mentioned the Paris as the last one. And of course, we all know they're not going to reach. So my, my, my question is, uh, uh, do we have the right approach? I mean, are we doing the right thing? I mean, we expect from the leaders that are in power for years, and then comes another one. Instead of really be serious about educating the people, convincing the ones, uh, young people, make them conscious that uh, Whatever they do now, and whatever they act, we will have a consequence. I was really shocked that uh, 2,000 and 100, so my granddaughter, oh boy, I have to pray every day for her because I don't think she's going to survive. <laughs> I'll be long gone, but she... So, 
my question is, do we have the right approach? I mean, do you think that the leaders will really solve the problem? Yeah, that is, of course, a question I'm not able to answer in, in any reason, reasonable way, but it's the right question you are asking. Yeah? And I'm asking it for myself for 30 years, of course. Uh, I think uh, the Paris Agreement, of course, was not a plan to save the planet, but it had a, has a very high symbolic value in the sense uh, that all countries on Earth more or less said, this, we take it seriously and we want to solve it. We do not know precisely how, of course, uh, but it's the first step that you make a resolve. So, um, several answers to what you said. Um, there are some politicians, and I'm, I think I, I'm privileged to know one of them very well, that is the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who holds a f degree in theoretical physics, actually a PhD. It is a very rare event, I think, in with sitting governments. Uh, um, uh, she takes it really seriously, and she has a long-term approach to it. And of course, you know, politics is wavering. She's running now for a fourth term, actually, and there are a few of us, actually, who take it seriously. But they tell me, so what I know, I'm not a politician, I'm a scientist, but they tell me we can only ride the waves of public opinion also. Huh? So you can steer, but you need to surf on a big wave. Of, and there are things like, you know, divestments that young people are asking that money is not invested anymore into fossil fuels, but rather in renewables. For example, if you pay a, a, a huge fee at the Harvard campus, uh, so I think it's $50,000 per term now, or even more, things like that, why is it invested in weapons deals, uh, fossil fuel, uh, sort of textile industry that is uh, uh, exploiting young, young children and so on? It's crazy. But on the one hand, a university like Harvard is providing a, a, a generation with the best life opportunities, and at the same time destroying the very life support systems uh, where this generation depends upon. Uh, it's a crazy and schizophrenic thing. I think young people should ask. So I'm absolutely with you. I think we have to have a dialogue in particular with the young and the youngest generation. Uh, Pierre Lena is uh, asking for that all the time because it's their destiny yeah, which depends upon us. So it is an unusual coalition between wise or not so wise old men and ladies uh, and the, real, the really young people. But I think Pope Francis is actually referring to that and he made this spot on step made yesterday. He said, and I think that's part of the story. Science should not just produce world-class results, of course, we try to do it, uh, but we should also take a public stance. We should say what our findings really mean for the good of humanity, for the Casa Común, actually. Uh, and we have to take it even more seriously. Now, uh, I talked about non-linear effects in the climate system. Fortunately, there are also non-linear developments in the social system. Eh? Mm -hmm. You have social tipping points. Eh? We talked about, you know, mobile phones and uh, they penetrate all of Africa now and so on. I do believe that there are also disruptive benefits. Eh? So if you bring down the cost of uh, solar, for small-scale solar, far below diesel engines and so on, eh? it will have a contagious effect. Eh? So it's a combination of wise government, sort of rebellious youth, uh, sort of uh, movements actually, and disruptive technology that can in the end uh, give us the right narrative. It's an unusual coalition, I know, but it's the only hope we have. It's a bit depressing to hear that uh, uh, politicians uh, are resigned to the idea that we have to ride the, the wave of public opinion. There is an alternative. It's called real leadership. I don't think that it's very likely that it's going to happen, but uh, I think that at least in the Vatican you have the possibility of some real leadership. But um, um, other questions? Yes. 
I'm wondering if uh, this statement, I'm, I'm just thinking of the numbers, and, and uh, Dr. Evans' comment made me think of this, that you know, we're all horrified at the senseless death in violence and war and terrorism, and yet a comparable number of people are dying quietly because of pollution every year. The, uh, the contrast between the two is, I think, uh, it, this, this is where the war is happening. <coughs> I don't put my faith in leaders. I don't trust any one leader will be around or be able to do enough. I think the real task of us is to change the direction of the wave that the leaders ride on, to change public opinion, to do it in, in small ways at, at under the radar. I think all of the action really ultimately happens under the radar. I think most of the technological advances that we've seen happened are happening because individuals have decided they want to make it happen before, before waiting for a government to act. And if I see any hope, the hope is in that. Maybe uh, allow me, and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that you, you give me, or actually you, you point me to what I should also have said to Dr. Bagnato, uh, his question, because he does not seem to be satisfied with my answer yet, uh, <laughs> because living in, in, in a country where all, everything can happen, uh, I mean, of course, one, one gets very skeptical. Uh, so I, I, what I said, what I touched upon yesterday, what I really believe could, could change our cause uh, is what you also mentioned yesterday and other people mentioned. Um, I think we, we are, pursuing the wrong culture as a modern civilization, the culture of greed in the end. Uh, and actually, I talked to colleagues from Japan uh, this morning, and they said, you know, a century ago, we did not have this culture of overconsumption and greed. Uh, if you are a Zen Buddhist or whatever, I mean, you are satisfied with what you have, and you lead a happy life, probably. Uh. And uh, so it depends on many things. So I guess, the only way to, to have this rapid change of our civilization would be what I called a new social contract yesterday, uh, a, new, a new social contract for sustainability. And that can only mean that the rift between the rich and the poor cannot just widen and widen and widen. Uh. So today you have the super rich one per mil, I guess, of the planet. Uh, and the poor are stuck with $2 per day, even if they work in a sweatshop for 14 hours and so on. And this, of course, will tear apart everything. Uh? And so I guess, instead of a culture of greed, we need a culture of sharing. And that is completely in line, I think, from, with the messages from Laudato Si and the Catholic Church. <laughs>